and talk about the one I've been waiting for. Um, the Lindsay Horan interview from The Athletic is something that really did um, take some turns on social media. People had opinions about it. People were talking about it. And you know what? Whether positive or negative, we love to see women's soccer just kind of in the conversation that people are having. I had a lot of questions. I was at a wedding about what, how I felt about them. So this is something that Attacking Third Crew definitely wanted to cover here. Obviously, um, the article comes out by Meg Lenahan. It's called Lindsay Horan, U.S. Women's National Team Captain, Just Wants to Talk Soccer. And I think that some quotes were kind of taken out of that to make it seem a little more luring um, than maybe was meant to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get your guys' opinions on this because there are no right or wrongs here, just how we decided to interpret the information that was given here. Um, Darian, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, I... I mean, I don't disagree with what Lindsay was saying. I think the snippets that were taken from it and kind of blown up around like Twitter and on media, of course, it's going to be misconstrued if you don't have the full context of the interview and what she was really saying, which is in large part to the lack of media coverage in the U.S. around women's soccer. So, of course, when you watch it, people are speaking to a fan that maybe doesn't have the same access to in Europe, where you're able to watch and consume the language of football and what everything means day in and day out. And that's what's in the news. Like, soccer's never been our biggest sport here. So the fact that she's saying there's a part of the, the interview where she was talking about how um, – like her mom even just takes what the commentators say as fact and never even challenges it or just kind of regurgitates it. And my mom does the same thing. Like a lot of people end up doing that because there's <laughs> never that shout out to Monica. I love you, but there's never <laughs> been that much, much media coverage and let alone opportunity to dive deeper into what everything means and have a kind of variety of opinions about it. So I don't disagree with her. We don't have the most, I don't know, expansive vocabulary about it because we've never had the platform to do it, especially in women's soccer. So it's going to get better, obviously, with the NWCL new media rights deal. But um, yeah, I honestly, I liked it. I like that she's a straight shooter. Um, she likes the kind of uh, the commentary when people are challenging the US Women's National Team or critical of their game or critical of her game even. Like that's part of what we do in sports. That's part of why people like to perform is you go out and prove these haters wrong or, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't my best game. Um, but I think I'm, I, I like it. And I think it just goes to show that, yeah, we've had a lack of coverage and opportunity to speak on this stuff before, but it's just going to get better. Yeah, I agree a lot of with what you're saying, Darian. And another, a lot of the pull quotes from this article is what blew up and probably yeah. why we're talking about it right now. And if you go and read the whole article, I think readers will get a much fuller sense of what Lindsay Horan was trying to convey and the message that she wanted to get across in this interview. And it, I mean, in terms of growing up in America, we have soccer is not the biggest sport. It is not even the top two biggest sports, right? As in terms of professional and what's happening. And that has changed drastically. Even over my lifetime as a kid growing up, I wasn't watching soccer every chance I got. I was watching football and basketball and baseball and soccer when I could, but it wasn't on the forefront of my mind on my television every single day or at the conversations in the classroom as a kid or on the recess yard. That's not what we were, I was doing as a a kid. And yet I get the privilege and the pleasure to work in it every day. Whereas in Europe, that's what those kids are doing. They are waking up and watching soccer. They're playing it in the yard. They're playing it at school, in the street, on teams, organized, and just it's fully immersed in the sport. And in America, it's not at all like that. And I don't think that that's right or wrong by any means. And when you look at Lindsay Horan and her career as a soccer player, she knew what she wanted from a very, very early age. She was one of the very first players to forego college. She had committed to UNC and decided UNC. I'm not and I'm not going to play in college at UNC. I'm going to go overseas and play for PSG in France because I want to play and I want to play a French style of soccer overseas, not in America. And the fact that Haran did that, knew what she wanted to do, was able to do that. She has played in the NWSL, of course, but she likes it better over there. I think mm -hmm. that's fine. That's great, honestly, because it, as a U.S. international, she then brings that experience back to the women's national team here in America. America, and it just adds a different wrinkle to the game. She, she even quotes in this article, I want professionalism. She wanted that when she was 18 and that's why she didn't play collegiately.
you know what? Oh. I, correct me if I'm wrong here, Sandra. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go here, but correct me if I'm wrong here. When she did a, originally go to play in France, there was like a little bit of a stir about that professionalism that was expected of her. Like she had to dress a certain way, pregame, postgame for interviews, like certain type of diet potentially. Like I don't remember. There was definitely like conversation around it needing to be more professional than she had ever experienced it here in the States. Am I, am I misquoting that there, Sandra? I don't think you're, I think you're maybe not misquoting it, but I think you're trying to connect some things that are relevant to her current comments. But I mean, we also have to remember that there are also experiences that Lindsay Horan had in France that she was not fond of. Yeah. So there's also that angle yes. as, as well, which I think is what you're alluding to. Um, and you know, if that's been well documented, it's been well reported on, folks can feel free to go and, and, and catch up on that. But for this context, for what we're talking about right now in this conversation, uh, I think maybe that maybe that is the part that, that ruffles some some feathers a little bit. I think I think that's where we are with it now, as a matter of fact. I think it's like it's a scenario, it's a case of where look at all these many things that can exist and be true at the same time. You know, we've got a, a couple of, of our pundits here with Lisa Darian saying, look, there's a couple of those things that she mentioned inside that article that I, you know, uh, agree with, or I could see her perspective on, you know, but I think there's also some other things within there where it's like, well, maybe the perspective is, is different if you're talking to people who are vested into uh, the game or watching it week in, week out, you know, maybe not alluding to the fact that there are folks who de dedicate themselves to, to following uh, the sport a bit. You know, I think that's kind of where it sort of feels like things are right now. Um, there's been some, a few days for folks to kind of maybe digest those things and, maybe they're thinking about it differently, or maybe they're still standing on their own own opinions around it. I think in regards to, to the professionalism, I think that's also something that's a matter of perspective as well. You know, I think, I think the way that some players want to navigate their careers or operate within their clubs, or whether that means they want to show off some of their personality, I think some of that is also very uniquely uh, American. I think when, you, when she's utilizing a specific example of a team photo, I think that's something to to celebrate, but I'm someone of a different, obviously here of a different opinion, of a different perception. I'm sure if you ask someone else, they'd say, knock that stuff off, you know? So I think it's all about, it's all about perception, which is a lot of people's reality. And I think in this case, you're talking to one and then Lindsay Horan and she says, I want a little bit more of this. I want a little bit more of just the, the football versus some of these, these other things. And I'm not going to sit here and say that she's incorrect or wrong in saying that. I'm just going to say that those are opinions and that's what she felt. And she said it, she said those things to a reporter they're in an article and i'm uh, i'm also just sort of still stuck on the fact that she she utilized her own mother as kind of like in, in, in the <laughs> highlight you know what i'm saying like she used her mom to highlight that example darian also is over here like using her mom I love you mom ex yeah exactly like using using an example of that as well i'm someone who's reported on the game and i could probably use my own parents who maybe don't uh, follow or watch specifically the women's side of the game, let alone soccer, and say they've maybe asked me a question or two to kind of, you know, clear to, to clarify some things for them. So I, I would imagine that if you are someone who follows this sport in this country, you're going to see though that sentence and get set off, right? I, and I think that that's a completely understandable thing. You're going to say like, hey, hey now, I'm someone who's vested in this sport. I enjoy watching it. I root for that team. I Maybe you're someone you're like, hey, I try to follow your your game across uh, across overseas. And I struggle to maybe even try to find access to that. But I, I find your games and, and I watch it. So I think, um, you know, the, the that one specific sentence out of a out of a larger um, out of a larger article, I think was always going to be the thing that people uh you know, kind of clung to. And I think here we are about four or five days removed and it's still the thing that folks are going to cling to. Right. Sandra, I definitely think that some people are upset by those comments um, based upon that quote to begin with. And there's definitely, <coughs> excuse me. I think if we're talking Even about like different soccer cultures too. Like that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. I think there are folks who are like, Oh, like what does this say to other areas of right. the globally, like global footballing world. It's like, you know, why are you going to like, you know, this concept of like, Oh, don't tear down, you know, our footballing culture for the sake of others. There's all that, 
that comes with it as well. And I, and I get it. Like I said, there's a little part of it. I like when you, we can point out and look at certain aspects of um, NWSL soccer or U.S. Women's National Team soccer, and you can point it out and say that is something that is u- uniquely American, right? And I guess if, maybe if you ask you know, someone who strictly watches European football, they'll just be like, that's for crap you're doing it incorrectly. You shouldn't act like that. You shouldn't do, you know, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And I think it's a very American thing to maybe kind of take that and say, well, I'm going to try to take that, do the opposite of it, maybe even be a little bit better at it. Well, um, Darian, obviously you play professional in France and you've played in the NWSL as well. Um, which do you feel was more or less professional or do you feel similar sentiment towards, um, what Lindsay is saying here? Obviously you, you agree to a certain extent, but how was your experience in that sense? Uh, yeah, uh, it's funny story, uh, before I go on, but Lindsay and I roomed together a couple of times, I think for the U 20 national team, something. And I remember being super nervous. I was like, Oh my God, this girl plays in France. She's going to be so good. Why she's going to be so like French intimidating, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I remember she's lovely. I love Lindsay, but our first training together, I can't remember what coach was there, but Lindsay dominated like the first day it's nerves, balls are flying around. It's crazy. It's chaotic. Uh, nobody can get a tempo. Everyone's really nervous. Lindsay was calm, cool, collected, clean on the ball. Um, I think if you were on her team, you won every small sided game. And I was like, wow, I want to do what she's done. I want to go play in France when I get the opportunity. And it's actually part of the reason why I ultimately did as far as the professionalism. I mean, that's football is their sport. That is their sport. We don't come up in that type of culture. So it's just different. There's much more of a respect for it. There's much more of a palette for the knowledge of it and the nuances of how to talk about a game and the rules of the game and how that evolves. And there's Champions League. Like there's just so much more contextually there and with a deeper history that's so a part of their cultural identity that, yeah, it's more professional in that sense of just the nuances of it, I think are, are much more appreciated than they are in the U S now in the U S we have far better resources depending on which team you're on. But I think overall you have far better resources. You fly everywhere. Um, you have training facilities, you get provided breakfast and lunch, like you have multiple trainers. Um, it's, it's just a different level, but also in France, like the game is like the Bible. It is, and that is what they live, eat and breathe. So it's just a different level of it. I wish that there was like the perfect combination of the two, which I think that we're going to get there. But, uh, yeah, in France, it's, it's no nonsense. I've never been in such serious film sessions or team meetings. Um, as it is in France, you sit a certain way, you don't speak, you don't eat, you don't drink, you listen, um, everything's cut down by like 10 minute increments of where you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to show up, how you're supposed to dress. Your attire is completely different. Whereas in the U S I kind of hated that in France. Cause you guys know, I like to dress up. I like to do weird crap with my hair. Um, so it, that was not because that's an I American thing it. to do. It is. But that's it what I'm saying. Sure the other is. side of it, that's like the cult of cult freedom. Are different. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I I exactly. point here, you know, so correct there. Sandra, I mean, one of the things that I was kind of thinking about when all this was happening was the difference with the Mexican national team in the U.S., because I can only pull from my own experience, is that um, with Mexico, we had a certain wardrobe every single time. We were not allowed to be seen in anything besides Mexico, um, top and bottom. And obviously, like, concentración, no phones, no internet, no whatever. And when I went with the U.S. national team camp at the same time, this is when I'm playing for both teams at the same time. I mean, we could do whatever we wanted in the sense of, you know, not whatever we wanted, but it was more free to go hang out with your family, go see your friends, go whatever while you're at camp, Um, go to the mall and stuff. And with Mexico, it was like you stay in and you don't talk to anyone. You just come and train three times a day, whatever. And no, I love I love that. though. That's and I think it's important to get your experiences with playing with dual national teams like that and hearing Darian's as well, like because that's also part of this, too, that. You know, it's not just about like, oh, like Lindsay Horan came up in an interview and told Americans they were all laissez compétent. That's not what this is. This is like, there's some deeper things here that if we want to give some time to, we could talk about them. And we are, we're doing that. And I, I, when you're, again, it's all about perspective and where you're at coming from it globally. You could say footballing culture is like here in France, it's like this, A, B, C, D playing and training out in Mexico, we had to do this, this, and this. I mean, we have examples here in the United States. I have spoken with international players. I've had interviews with international players who come to NWSL and are blown away 
at how they are actually able to navigate life with a little bit more freedom, where it actually isn't so much emphasis on the football. And for that, it has they have been grateful for that. Yuki Nagasato having one of her best career, like season career years during her time in Chicago alluded to that with me, a Japanese player saying, coming here, it's not actually always about the football. It's important because you're here to, that's our job and we're here to play that sport, but it's equally important to, to have freedoms outside of football, to do this, to have interests, to have hobbies. And that that was a uniquely, you know, different type of lens for her to get for one of the first times in her career. And that's someone who has played in for Japan, Germany, England. Like she's someone who's been in where it also speaking with players who come to the United States and how they have learned again, another different type of footballing culture has benefited them as well. So that's a beautiful way to view it too. You know, like I, obviously it's different. That's a matter of fact in every country. And now we're doing it. We do have to go to a commercial here, but I do think it's a great conversation to touch on and no one is right or wrong in these things. Right. Like, I don't think anyone's dumb in comparison to us, but like, that's not what was said. You know what I mean? Like, or, or how we interpret it. It just depends upon our perception. Um, and, and how countries view the game, like, like um, Darian has started us off there with France as an example.